Welcome back. My name is Neckrage, and we're here with another build. This time it's going to be a Hammer of the Ancients hardcore build that focuses on overpower. This is probably going to be one of the hardest hitting single target. How do I word this? The a single strike, right? To see the biggest number you could possibly see, right? This is probably going to be that build. Yeah, you can do some stuff to tweak it here and there. And of course, if you make it a soft core build and you ignore all of your survivability nodes and you go for a straight up damage, yes, you will hit harder. But what I mean is a hardcore viable build that hits extremely hard that will probably dunk every elite and, and do massive damage to, to bosses and world bosses. This is, a, uh, this is an interesting build for you people that, that want to see those very, very big numbers. All right. Let's get started. And there's a lot of survivability in this too, I promise. As always with my builds for hardcore. Frenzy, love it. We know it, we love it. You dual wield, it increases attack speed up to uh, up to 60% with three charges. We get the, uh, of course, a 60% attack bonus speed. Um, it generates two additional fury, helps you generate a lot of fury quickly. And then of course, the 8% damage reduction with each stack of Frenzy we have. That's 24% damage reduction. You could also get a, um, a legendary amulet that will increase your frenzy stacks by two, which is absolutely incredible. Um, will further increase your damage reduction. Uh, well, yeah, increase your damage reduction, which means you know you take less damage, and it also gives you attack speed increase with your other skills, which would be Hammer of the Ancients. Um, two aspects I'm going to talk about while we're here. Hammer of the Ancients quakes outwards, dealing 32 to 50 percent of its damage to enemies. You can put that on a two-hand weapon if you want, or 100 percent increase, or um, on your amulet, assuming you don't have the unique amulet, of course. This is amazing because it really helps you clear out some uh, some crowds. And Hammer of the Ancients hits so damn hard, you will almost one-shot every non-elite enemy when you use this. And quite literally, we'll be one-shotting elites um, if you get an overpower off. Uh, Earth Striker's aspect, after swapping weapons 10 times, your next attack will overpower and deal 30-50% increased overpower damage. So we do have a guaranteed overpower there that will pop. Those two aspects are key to this build. Hammer of the Ancients, why the hell does it hit so hard? Well, let me show you why. Um, well, we'll look at this lucky hit. We'll be applying vulnerable vulnerable to, to uh, enemies. Your core skill is 30% chance to make enemies vulnerable for two seconds. So there's our damage increase right there. Five out of five Hammer of the Ancients. And then, of course, gain 3% more Fury for five seconds for each enemy damaged by Hammer of the Ancients, stacking up to 10 times. And this aspect helps trigger that. So when you use that aspect, it doesn't AOE, you'll help get the uh, additional enemies hit. It'll help you gain more fury so you can follow up with additional Hammer of the Ancients quite quickly. Hammer of the Ancients deals 1% additional damage for each point of fury you had when using it. That means the more fury we have, the more damage it will do, right? So if you have 100 fury, it does 100% additional damage. That's double damage, right? Well, that's not where we end things because we can increase our maximum fury using the Paragon tree, right? So that's an option, and we're definitely going to utilize that, amongst other things. This is a hardcore build, so we definitely take the 15% additional maximum life. We take the 9% damage reduction versus elites. That works on bosses, act ending bosses, your world bosses, of course your elites, dungeon bosses, all that good stuff. It's great. Rallying Cry, movement speed, resource generation, works for you and your allies. Unstoppable, gets you out of your crowd control effects. And for those of you who don't know, you can't use a potion if you're stunned, so stuff like this is, is very, very important. If you're stunned or frozen, no potion for you, so you might die in that and lose your hardcore character. Make sure you have a way to get Unstoppable applied to your character. And additional tip, you can use abilities that give you Unstoppable while you are crowd controlled. So you can use anything else. You'll see like your entire bar gray out, but you'll see one ability or maybe you have two abilities with Unstoppable. They'll be lit up. Essentially, the game is telling you, hey, idiot, you can use these abilities, use it, break out of the stun, get out of there and save your life. So very important uh, point there. Rallying Cry generates 20, 20 Fury and grants you an additional 20% resource generation. We went with that because we do like as much resource generation as possible for this build to be just pumping out Hammer of the Ancients. And it's going to cost us... 70 fury to use hammer of the ancients i'll show you why i know it says 35 but we're gonna get there challenging shout taught nearby enemies 40 percent damage reduction for six seconds while challenging shout is active you gain 20 percent bonus manic bonus maximum life we're not gonna grab any of the uh, additional two options here that's really not worth it war cry which means more damage for us it applies berserking to us as well and it gives us fortify 
which is very, very important to stay alive. Uh, we get shout duration increase, reduced damage uh, from enemies that are affected uh, by our shout. So if we use a shout and there's enemies nearby, they'll have their damage reduced by 12%. That helps you and your allies if you're grouped with anyone. That's great. Also healing every 3%, uh, 3% life per second. Um, leap, this is optional. You don't need to bring Leap. You could take an ultimate instead, like Berser Wrath the Berserker. Completely up to you. There's really no right answer there. Both are options. But I did go with Leap because um, I like the mobility for this build. Um, getting into place and, and using your hammer on the Ancients, hammer of the Ancients on an enemy quicker is just higher DPS if you're able to close that gap quicker. But also keep in mind, Wrath of the Berserker does give you movement speed increase as well. So that is um, that is also something to consider. It could help you get into position quicker as well. Um, one thing I really do like about this is this one we take, of course, we have to. If it doesn't hit an enemy, you get cooldown reduced by four seconds. But if it does hit an enemy, we gain 40 Fury, another way to dish out more Hammer of the Ancients. Um, this, this uh, passive here I love. You deal 9% increased damage to close enemies, and we take 6% less damage from distant enemies. Then we have uh, these three here. They're all fortify-related. Fortify -related. Um, we take we gain fortify 1.2% of our base life if we take a, a hit. While you have fortify for over 50% of your maximum life, you deal 12% increased damage. Increase the damage reduction gained while you are fortified by an additional 6%. Fortify is 10% by default, so an additional 6% is great. And then, of course, things in the Paragon tree up that even further. While using a two-handed weapon, you deal 15% increased critical strike damage. Your overpowers deal 45% increased damage while using a two-handed weapon. Builds uh, that revolves around overpowers. Core skills deal 135% increased damage, but cost 100% more fury. So, 135% increased damage... A 100% increased damage at Max Fury, but we're also going to increase the Max Fury beyond 100. So you'll be getting more than that. So let's just say, uh, let's take a look here. Um, maximum Fury 64 in the Paragon Tree. There's a little spoiler for, for you. We, ex we end up with additional 64 Maximum Fury. So that is 164% additional damage just for having Maximum Fury when you use Hammer of the Ancients. 164% plus... 135%, that's 299%, 299% additional damage. Did I do that right? 165 plus 135, I'm sorry, 164 plus 135, 299%, 299% additional damage on your Hammer of the Ancients. That is before a crit, before an overpower, and if, if you don't know, Overpower is essentially like a double crit, essentially. And Overpower's damage is based off how much life you have and how much Fortify you have. That increases how much damage an Overpower does. So running a tanky build with an incredibly high single target hitting Hammer of the Ancients with talents in the build that, that um, increase how much Overpower damage we do anyway, the amount of damage that this is going to do when it Overpowers is absurd. If I had to guess, our level 20 Ashava uh, server slam test in gear that you can get around level 20, you're stuck at level 20, with, and that means no, you can't get this, you can't get these here, I would estimate you are hitting, and this is without the Paragon tree, you are hitting around 25,000. And it's been done. It has been done. We have hit around 25,000 damage already in, at level 20. In the server slam, no paragon tree, no final passives here, and none of these passives because we couldn't get them. We already hit 25,000 damage. You will be doing around 25k, maybe even a little bit more, depending on your gear. And um, of course, there's, there's incredible gear for it. There's Keep in mind, we do get that AoE to help us take out additional enemies uh, around us. We do get the guaranteed overpower. And we're going to jump into Paragon Tree. I'm going to show you a little bit more about overpower and why this build is going to be hitting quite literally harder than every single other build in the game. I think you'll be, you will struggle to hit harder. I'm not saying DPS. I'm saying like a single hit for the biggest number you could possibly see. You will find it harder to go higher than this build. You'll find it very difficult. I don't think you can. Um, okay, moving on. We take both sides of this tree. 
as always with every build because there's life on both sides very easy to get life nodes on, on right here and they're very hard to get in the actual trees when you're when you're further into the board so you gotta you gotta make use of these definitely grab your life nodes while you can armor is huge so we grab armor life physical damage life we run up here we grab 10 percent damage reduction the more fortify we have which is great to stay alive we need 25 willpower we got 5 10 15 20 and then we got some more here as well so we grabbed the additional willpower running down here. You could also remove this point here and save this point. It's still worth it, though, because you get that increased damage while fortified, and we're going to be fortified, like, the entire time. We grab both sides here. They're definitely worth grabbing, and we run up into the Warbringer tree, which is literally one of the best Paragon trees or Paragon boards out of all classes in the game. This is one of the best. This is amazing. No matter what people tell you, Warbringer is great. For every 75 Fury you spend, you gain 12% of your maximum life as Fortify, and that is maximum life. A lot of that is, a lot of the Fortify stuff, you see uh, base life as Fortify. 10% base life as Fortify, stuff like that. 12% of your maximum life as Fortify. For every 75 Fury we spend, we have very quick Fury builders in this build and big spenders. So we'll be moving Fury a lot in this build, and this will be proccing constantly. Left side, we grab the node. 10% damage reduction against close enemies. Great for barbarians, where we always want to keep our enemies close. Um, physical damage node. Resist node. Resist all elements. We come to the left here. We grab our um, maximum fury nodes. Very important for this build. Remember, maximum fury is good for the Hammer of the Ancients. And it's got life on it as well. We jet up here. We get um, fortified generation increase and uh, damage while fortified. And then a pure 10% damage. Go to the left, we grab Maximum Fury and Fury on Kill nodes here, which helps our damage. Come up here, we get Fire Resist and Life. Now, you got a choice to make. You either go up or you go right. This is a four glyph, um, four glyph build for the highest damage and survivability possible. Trust me, it's worth it. Decimator. We grab uh, Physical Damage and Life right off the Decimator node. Um, we come in here a little bit more. Damage to vulnerable enemies. We, get, we do have a, a way to uh, um, inflict vulnerability on our enemies, so we will take, uh, take that into account. We'll use that. Damage reduction from vulnerable enemies, which is great. And then, after not overpowering for 30 seconds, your next attack will overpower. So a guaranteed overpower every 30 seconds, and then we have the overpower from weapon swaps. These are good, and I know 30 seconds sounds a little bit long, and then 10 weapon swaps is another guarantee. The overpowers hit so damn hard that it's absolutely worth the 30 seconds. It is incredible. Uh, moving on up, we are in the Bone Breaker tree. Did I go over the other things, though? I did, right? Damage of vulnerable enemies? Yeah, I did. And we grabbed the life nodes here. We do like our life nodes, so we chased after them a little bit. Coming up into the Bone Breaker uh, Paragon board here. Damage reduction while fortified, increased fortified generation, and then overpowers with your two-handed bludgeoning weapon, stun enemies for four seconds, and grant you 25% of your maximum life as fortify. So, one of the reasons why I highly suggest doing Decimator first is not only for the life and the nodes and stuff, it's because once you take this, you're really going to be pushing towards the two-hand bludgeoning weapons, right? You're going to be want to be you want, you want to use them because you want to make use of your legendary node. The problem while leveling is I personally don't like to lock myself into a single weapon type because you never know what's going to drop. You might have a two-hand sword that drops and you're like, "Whoa, this thing's incredible, but I have this legendary node so I can't really use the two-hand sword." You want to take your time getting to this node because once you do, you want to make sure you already have a really nice two-hand bludgeoning weapon that's going to it's going to last you. You'll find new ones, you'll definitely find better ones, but you don't want to lock yourself into one early you don't want to lock yourself into a single weapon type too early but that is incredible weapon stun fortify we have overpowers going off quite frequently in this build as well um so damage reduction while fortified fortified generation we jump over here more damage while fortified um five percent damage while healthy which is great a bunch of healthy damage so when we run into a into a fight and maybe it's been 30 seconds um you're going into a the final area of a dungeon and you're like okay i know this this werewolf boss is quite strong let me hold me hold up for 10 seconds make sure this this glyph takes effect okay now i'm gonna overpower it at the start of the fight you go running in there you're healthy you're at full health you have your your fortify running and you slap him for an overpower right off the bat for like 50k that's actually going to happen that is how this build's gonna work 
Um, crazy amount of additional overpower damage, uh, damage to two-handed bludgeoning. So when we do get to this tree, Bone Breaker, we do get two-handed bludgeoning specific. So you are going to end up with a two-handed bludgeoning weapon in the end. Definitely worth it. Then we grab our lovely life and armor nodes. We love having those. We love staying alive in hardcore. Very, very important. And then, of course, we run to our final glyph. While wielding a mace, you deal 30% increased overpower damage. <laughs> the damage in this build is... It's dirty. It is going to be very high. Damage reduction while healthy. Damage reduction while healthy, which is good. That means when we have high health, the first hit we take is going to do much less damage because we're at a, we're considered a healthy state. More overpower damage. Ooh. And that is the end of the build. Looking at the stats page, 50% increased life from our Paragon tree. 990 armor. 27% uh, fortify generation. 16.35% resist all, not too bad. You definitely have to watch your resist though. Make sure you gem, gem your resist and fire resist 30%. Damage reduction from vulnerable, 10%. Damage reduction from fortified, 20%. That's in the addition to the 10% base and the 6% from the passive talent. So that ends up with 36% damage reduction while fortified. We have the frenzy charges running for damage reduction. That's tw another 24%. When you get the amulet, that's 40%. Damage reduction while healthy. We have damage reduction to close enemies, but I'm pretty sure this doesn't show it. No, it doesn't show it. Um, yeah, well, it shows it at 0% because it's coming from a glyph. So we have that 10% as well. Just an incredible amount of damage reduction in the build. Very high life, very high fury pool, uh, increased fury generation. And the amount of damage it's going to do is just, just ridiculous. Just absolutely crazy. And keep in mind, that overpower damage is from the Paragon Tree. Let's read a little bit about it. Ready? Extra damage granted skills when they overpower. Stacks with the bonus damage inherently granted to overpowers based on your current life and fortify. The bonus damage dealt scales with the skill that, that overpowered. Has a base value of 50%. Capped at 150% against other players. I guess it would be kind of unfair running into PvP and just slapping someone for 90k. <laughs> But keep in mind, we also have the 135% uh, increased damage there. The extra 164% uh, additional damage we'd get if we cast this at max fury. Um, that was 299% additional damage for Hammer of the Ancients. Then the overpower. The amount of damage this is going to do, I just... I cannot stress it enough. Like, the numbers we will be seeing with this is going to be just... If you want to have a build to run that you could have fun screenshots... Or little clips on a stream or something of like you hitting just for a massive amount. This is it. And if you ever do that, you ever run a, run a stream with the build, let me know. Definitely uh, link me your videos. I want to see I want to see the results of this build. Um, if you guys are running this build, if you're interested in this build, you have any questions, concerns. If you plan to run it, you plan to do anything a little different, let me know. I want to hear from you guys. And uh, check out the channel for other videos. Throw me a sub if you like this stuff. Uh, I also run a guild that's going to be playing in Diablo 4 Hardcore together, so if you're running alone and you want some companionship, hit us up, take a look at the video description. Always happy to have more hardcore players and like-minded individuals with us. We'll go uh, kick some ass together. So thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.